Alright, hey guys, it's Arj again, and today I'm gonna do a tutorial on Lars Alexanderson. Now, again, much like Brian, Lars is not really my main, Lars is just a character I've dabbled in, and I mean, he's a, he's a sort of character that a lot of people know how to use, he's got a pocket character, but in Tekken 7, he's gone through some changes. But the main basis of how to use Lars in a competitive environment remains the same. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about. So what I'm going to go through as always, first of all I'm going to go through the basics, the very basics to intermediate level of just like the punishes, his key moves and how to use Lars, what strategies I've seen top players use with Lars. And then, because I can't do everything that I'm going to talk about, so I can't do all the classy like incredible combos of Lars that possible with Lars, I'm going to then hand it over to the Korean game player that is featured on my channel every day as if you didn't know already I am the number one content collector of Korean and high level gameplay so we're gonna watch a class act from only practice the current number one best Lars in the world and we're gonna learn from him and see exactly these moves that I'm gonna teach you right now being put into practice in the real world and how exactly you can use them in a competitive and offline environment right so here we go so not getting too much into frames just as always but Lars's main 10 frame punisher will always going to be just one two as with most characters but then he also has forward two four which wall splats and allows for extended combos um his uh main uh punish after that is just up forward three the dreaded up forward three that everyone seems to hate everyone seems to think is so broken well in this game it's not as broken since tag two days it has, it's become less broken basically but yeah up forward three to punish like a really really punishable attack um, also of course uh, I think in the same range as that is also arc blast so I believe this is a 12 frame punish you can combo straight from this you can combo from any angle so a, a key tool that a lot and lot of Lars players will be using and you need to learn is the ability to sidestep and arc blast sidestep arc blast so many characters such as Harang will be linear or something you need to or the Mishimas you can sidestep to a certain side when you sidestep them you need to be able to arc blast and then combo straight away so that's a key skill that needs to be learned by any Lars player now punishes aside his other launches include a very very good version of the orbital hill which has incredible range so you can combo straight from this as well as normal so that's another uh, launch from him. So so far we've got up forward three, the arc blast, and the um, up forward four orbital heal. Uh, new to Tekken, I mean new to Tekken seven is this next launcher, which I believe is a a high. Yes, it's a high. So typically he has uh, what we call dynamic entry. Now dynamic entry, actually, if you just press it like this, is is a very slow movement. It looks like as you're left in a very um, uh, weird predicament where you're just standing still and there's a lot of recovery frames but you can actually cancel out of it by pressing so when you press to do a dynamic entry you need to press forward X but to cancel it and cancel it like this and move as fast as you want you need to go forward X and then cancel with a down press on the d-pad so in this way we can cancel out and do whatever you want so you can cancel it out right into their face and then punish like that oh and that moves me on to another punish that they have that um, Lars has so this is one taken straight out of tag 2 and it works in exactly the same way as it did in tag 2 so it actually introduces a bound so in tag 2 and Tekken 6 you were able to bound characters where you'd slam them into the floor and this is basically the same or the equivalent of a corkscrew but now you'll be able to bound in the same combo and then corkscrew all within the same combo so this is a great tool for 
characters which are at range. So if they we see them with that range, you can go straight like that. It's very fast and very effective. You don't even need to finish it. You can even finish. You can just uh, do the first move, scare them, because you can't um, unfortunately hit confirm this. But what you can do for hit confirming is this move. This is also a launch. This is a natural combo launch. If you land the first hit, you will launch and it will be a straight corkscrew. Now, this is something that not many people talk about, but this move has slight hit confirmability. Very, very slight hit confirmability. It's very tight. You need to be really on top of your game to get it. But if you can tell exactly when it hits, you can have a little time frame to then uh, complete the combo. So. That is also a fantastic move. And this move is really great because it appears to crush a ridiculous amount of high moves. So any high move, it crushes. Because you can tell this because Lars goes in a, in a motion where he ducks down and then rises up. And this is why he's able to uh, crush a lot of high moves. And I've also seen it crush a lot of mid moves. So it's a very underrated move that has a lot of application. The only thing is, its second move is a high. So it can be ducked at higher levels. But... This first move can just be spammed as much as you want to be fair because people will be afraid of being hit by that second bit of the attack. So next we have some of Lars's uh, lows. Lars has some good lows in the game. The most useful low for higher levels I'd say are the quick lows. So the quick lows are obviously just down one as every character but he also has uh, down down backwards, um, down, yeah, down backwards, uh, one. So down backwards one, um, which is that, but then it has a natural combo. So if you do down backwards one, three, you have that natural combo, which does a decent amount of damage. But you also have something, um, uh, let me see, back down one, Back down one four, then down forward, and then you will get into this position. Now in this position, you're in a crouch, you're in crouching stance, and this is where Lars's other skills come into play. So, Lars has the ability in his crouching stance to go for a full crouch, low mix up, and it does a it's super fast and does a good amount of damage, and it's very easy to get into. So, I could just be standing here, crouch down. It's like almost as as good as just doing a regular low. Now his mix up here is he has he has this one which is a nice safe mid. Well it's not safe actually. It can be punished but only by just a get up kick. But obviously but this is safe. This one hit is safe. And of course he has a launch as well. So and that can go straight into combo as you'd expect. Um but yeah, also with what makes uh his mid option safer here is this option can be cancelled to give some distance so what you need to do there is when you press this button you need to immediately hold down backwards so when you do that you can then you're now in a dynamic entry sort of position so then you can go and do a dynamic entry move so new to also to last dynamic entry is that move where basically you just press dynamic entry and then press X again and you'll be doing a dynamic entry uh, kick which is a slows down the momentum of the game. It's a very powerful kick, and is very similar to this move of Lars, which also slows down the momentum of the game and does a very powerful kick that gives you plus frames. So the the aim of those two kicks is to really give you plus frames. Now that brings me on to the staple moves of Lars. So obviously, down back two one. This is a great move for ranges, all ranges, to mid somehow. It can pick up a lot of moves, a lot of characters in any any sort of weird stance. You can pick them up and allow you to combo straight from them. So that is a great move at range. It can also be cancelled for you to do one, one down back two, then go move straight into forward down and you get into dynamic entry as a result. And when you're in dynamic entry, you are then able to um, go into a number of stances. So 
from Dynam Entry, you can either do a, a mid launch like that, which is very fast and has a lot of range, or you can go on to do a low, which doesn't knock down anymore. It just keeps the character standing up. So it allows you to build pressure. Or you can go straight into a, a very fast mid witch wall splats. Uh, so other key moves to also remember, another key move that you definitely need to know is this back one. Fully self-explanatory, it's super fast, it's tracking, it's Lars' best tracking move, it's super fast. It's a move that I wish every character had, but only Lars has it and it's incredible. Other than that, of course he's got that low, the forward forward 3-4. This is a really unexpected low, but of course if they do block it, you are liable to be punished ridiculously. Now another thing is if they stand on the f if they're on the floor um, is down one three as you can see it picks them up um, in certain scenarios so in this range you can use this and it picks them up and you get extra damage with the wall so down what no down three one will get you this move as well so this is a good move to do when you think they're going to stay on the ground now in terms of in terms of combos for Lars, I am not um, far from an expert on combos with Lars. All I know are the basic combos, but from what I can tell, you can do a lot of variants where basically you launch them and then you'll, you'll go into this mode and you'll be able to... You'll be able to go and do this and that and you, basically a lot of variation comes from the dynamic entry. It allows you to move right across the screen allowing Lars to reach the wall and then ultimately be able to do his wall ammo which is where he gets the, the large bulk of his damage. So that's how the majority of Lars users will be in. Definitely at the top level they all strive to push the character, the opponent, all the way across the screen to the next wall. And that's what Lars's moves are generally about. So like I said, this will all be in the combo, within the combo. And as you saw, he moves right across the screen. So that is what you'll probably see in the Korean gameplay that I'll show you later. Now, another move that Lars must use, Lars players must use effectively is this mid uh, launcher. But this is a mid launcher that only works when counter hit. But if you can use it, it's because it's safe, you can use it at many ranges and hope for the counter hit. And that's what a lot of the top players use. So in counter hit, you're then able to combo and do everything as you'd expect. Now, a tactic that I normally use with Lars is I used him similar to Lily. So he hasn't got the same... Uh, sidestep as Lily, Elisa or Miguel but there are certain uh, scenarios where you are able to sidestep and when you sidestep his his wall splatting 2-4 is very similar to Lily so I use that as well I do that and then I get the full combo and Lars's wall combo damage is out of this world if you not see that I'll, I'll do it again sorry so so the notation of that is he hits him against the wall, he does this, then he does the down back 2-1 and then he finishes it with a forward 1-4. It's a ridiculous amount of damage and, and you can basically do that at any time. For any single time it hits at the wall you can do that same combo. It's very very um, useful and it's very very consistent. Uh, other moves Lars has are other lows. So this low, it's, it's actually got a lot of range, it also counter hits into a combo when you hit it. It it's can be punishable, but it's one of the faster lows of that kind. It's definitely better than a snake edge. Not everyone can see this coming, definitely if you're mixing it up with uh, the Orbiter Hills or the Up Forward 3, just it's a good low. Another low used, which is very punishable, but it's still used by the top guys because it's still quite fast and it's very damaging. The risk reward is great. Is forward, forward, uh, three, four. So a key uh, usage of this move that many top Koreans use is that they don't finish with the four. What they do is they do this first move and then they keep carrying on, so they have pressure and then they'll carry on and do it again after that. This allows 
to fluster your opponent, make them think twice about what's going on, because they may be expecting you to do lows, but if you're just not even finishing the string and you're carrying on the pressure, you can carry on. Now, you just saw me do a nice barrage of hits there, and that is the main pressure of Lars. So the main pressure of Lars is that his jabs have a great range, a better, a better range than most characters, and they're very fast. Have a look at this the speed of his, his pokes here, and then you can go into his mid uh, down forward one. Now his down forward one actually has crushing properties that many people realize when they play Lars but just no one mentions it. They have crushing properties on a lot of highs so you can actually do this and do this and many people will be, um, be get hit by that move. Also what happens with Lars as well is that he has this move which normally people will combo straight after this. So do this and then they'll do this. That is a 1-4. So 1-4 does this. It's a very fast high to mid low and it's, it's pretty unseeable like if someone's coming in at you with the mids you're not going to anticipate them to go do a high mid a high low straight away so that's a great move um so yeah that in combination with everything i've just mentioned his ability to just just go like that his ability to wall splat anytime he's able to sidestep arc blast and his wall combo damage potential makes Lars a very very strong and difficult character to deal with in my opinion coupled together also his wall his running while running three is also very strong and also very fast and tracks a little he is a very very good character and these are basically the basics of how Lars is used in intermediate play so I've given you the basics and now we're going to go over to the high level Korean gameplay and we're going to see all of this put into real world um, scenarios where you can really see how when put in the right hands Lars is a monster. So let's get right into it. Okay guys, okay guys so as always we're on my channel now, we're on Call Me Arj and if you didn't know already, I am the number one collector of Tekken 7 content. So this is where basically everyone came for Tekken 7 content before the game was out. Because I have the top gameplay um, uh, matches from every single player, every single country, all the high level gameplay. So, And what I did was I organized everything into perfect little playlists so i have playlists for every single character as well as every single player as well so if you ever wanted to learn more about your gin how to play gin better you just click on the gin playlist or if you want to learn devil gin you look on De devil gin so in this scenario we're trying to look at lars so we're going to go over to the lars you've got to find them this i've got a place for every single character so you got to look through them uh at lars here we go so 41 videos for lars so I'm gonna find a really good one. One of my favorites is by Only Practiced against a uh, Japanese pro. This is a fantastic match. It's one of my most watched for Lars. So let's get right into it. See a professional play Lars using those same moves and how to use them effectively. Right, so he starts off with the up forward three. Tries to do an arc blast, it's a fast launch, it could work. So this is the combos that you can use. Again, at range he was able to whiff punish with that uh that uh forward forward back four one. Uh forward back two one, sorry. Again, so he was in dynamic entry, did the mid low. Comboed using that new move of Lars got to get new to Tekken 7. Another move you saw there actually that where it was a kick, that's the down forward three four. That is actually uh another punish but it is very punishable as itself because it's got a mid I mean uh, a high end to it so yeah, there he's done the forward forward 2-1 or one. Well, 1 plus 2 sorry on counter hit gives a full combo 
He wasn't able to finish it, but yeah, it does. There, like I said, it crushed it. That down forward 2-1 has some real serious crushing properties. Here he's cancelling the dynamic entry. Again, trying to fish for that counter hit because it's a great move and it's safe, so go for it. Here he's on that really, really good uh, one, one, four string. Comboing now. Again, using that natural combo down forward 2 1 to extend the combo. They're doing the running through, running one. It's a very good kick. Gives them a good plus frames as well. So next match. Here he's doing that really fast mid back one. So back one, really, really great move. Very fast, tracks. There, just finishing off that good low. It's a good low to use that range. It's got a really great range. Here's fishing for that counter hit, and you just see how he stopped at the first hit because you can kick confirm it. There is that ridiculous wall damage as we showed before. There again, as I showed you, you can just stand, you can literally duck right in someone's face and quickly do that whilst, whilst um, while crouching low. It's a fantastic manoeuvre that many last players at the highest level use. There he could have arc blasted, but he chose instead to do the orbital heal, doing the combo. There he's done the back one finish off a fantastic fast move that tracks so you can see more combos like that so what we've learned from watching this I hope you've learned is just exactly how you can use those moves that I showed you the techniques that I've seen them use how they can be used in a more uh, more realistic environment in a competitive environment where you're under pressure so as you can see only practice uses every single thing I spoke about and uses them so well that I can just point them out as soon as I see them. Now, if you need more practice on how to use your LARS in particular, you definitely need to visit my channel and go to the playlist for LARS where there is 41 different uh, episodes, I guess, of gameplay of the highest level LARS. And I've also got my own only practice playlist so you can see specifically only practice who is the number one LARS player. So make sure today, subscribe and Go over to his playlist and learn and get better at the game. Alright, cheers.